Guys, not a good weekend at all with the picks here on the Power 5. However, still a 107-84-5 overall run on the show. We get back on track today with a wide variety of selections, including Major League Baseball, the Premier League, and of course, the Monday Night Football doubleheader. As a reminder, you can always go ahead and comment down below with your thoughts on these selections. We start with Mets Braves over 7.5 in Game 1 of today's doubleheader. Here is the situation in Major League Baseball, specifically the National League wildcard picture. Hopefully, you took my advice from last week and bet the Diamondbacks 3-1 to one to miss the playoffs because right now, they are the most likely of the three teams to be left on the outside looking in. Of course, the other two, the Mets and Braves, they play two on Monday afternoon. As long as there is not a sweep, as long as one team does not win both games, then both the Mets and Braves go to the playoffs and the Diamondbacks are out. If one team does sweep, then obviously the team that gets swept, they're gone, their season's over, Arizona slides into the playoffs. Now, obviously, the Game 1 winner of today's doubleheader is going to have zero motivation to compete in Game 2 because they will have already clinched a playoff spot and the wild card round begins tomorrow and these teams are going to have to travel. You can't even really bet Game 2 right now for obvious reasons, so... Let's leave the various playoff permutations out of it and focus on what we can bet on, that being game one. And again, I like the over seven and a half here for this game one. It's going to be Spencer Schwellenbach going for the Braves and Tyler McGill going for the Mets. Schwellenbach just beat the Mets on Tuesday, uh, last Tuesday. So Mets second time facing him in less than a week. Last time Schwellenbach allowed just one run in 14 innings pitched. Uh, or pardon me, he's a lot, this season against the Mets, he's allowed just one run in 14 innings pitched. Uh, very good numbers, obviously, but it's a tricky spot, again, facing him for the second time in less than a week. The Mets do have a top seven scoring offense in all of Major League Baseball, 4.75 runs per game. They're very consistent home versus road. They're top six in home runs. Now, Atlanta is actually the NL's lowest scoring home team, but even still, they're averaging 3.9 runs per game here. They've been better since the break, and they're number three in home runs since the break. Very boom or bust. McGill's ERA on the road, 4.81, and he walks a lot of guys. 3.7 per nine innings. I think seven and a half is too low of a total for game one, and keep this in mind. If one of these starters has a bad day at the office, okay, and gets blown up, the the, that, the, the, the other uh, manager is going to, or that, that team's manager is going to look at this game and say, hey guys, we're not winning game one. We're going to put all our eggs in basket in game two. He's not going to use any high leverage relievers in game one. So if this thing gets out of hand early, there's going to be a ton of runs. Because of that, I like over seven and a half uh, in game one of Mets Braves. Okay, while we are determining the final two wildcard spots in the National League, there's some soccer to bet on as well. English Premier League, Price has gone up on Bournemouth all week. The Cherries currently sitting around minus 170 on the three-way line, and for good reason, they're facing Southampton. Southampton back in the Premier League this season after getting relegated. They are very likely to finish near the bottom of the table once again. They've got just one point through their first five matches, meaning no wins and just one draw. That lone draw came against Ipswich Town, who I have rated as the worst team in the league, and it was a brutal result considering Ipswich scored deep into stoppage time. Southampton, they've also scored just two goals in those five matches. That's the fewest in the league. So the Saints will be no match for Bournemouth, who have played one of the toughest schedules in the English Premier League up until this point, facing the likes of Chelsea, Newcastle United, and Liverpool in previous fixtures. Being at home Monday afternoon should be huge for Bournemouth. They previously only lost one of their last 19 home matches against newly promoted clubs. Plus, they've won the XG battle in both home matches this season after losing only three of their last 13 at home to end last season while posting a plus 9.1 XGD. That's expected goal differential. Bournemouth wins here and gets all three points. I would lay the price. All right, before we get to Monday Night Football, and I'll have three plays for you on tonight's two games, just wanted to let you know, despite the disappointing weekend here on the Power Five, I am still number one this season in the NFL at Wager Talk. 11-4, and four, that's 73%, with all client releases, including a sparkling 8-1 and one with sides. I went 2-1 and one yesterday, cashed the Jaguars, cashed the Ravens, lost the Packers, Tonight, my best bet is on Seahawks-Lions, and it is the side. So head on over to wt.buzz slash bp right away. Again, 11-4 and four with all NFL this season, including 8-1 and one with sides. That is number one at wagetalk.com. As for the side of Titans-Dolphins, obviously, this is a putrid game. 
with Will Levis and Tyler Huntley as your two starting quarterbacks. But Huntley's actually an upgrade over Skylar Thompson and especially uh, former Aaron Rodgers bag carrier Tim Boyle. Uh, so uh, I like Miami in this game to win. Uh, Huntley's got the better ca- supporting cast of offensive weapons. Achan, Hill, Waddle. Will Levis of Tennessee makes too many backbreaking mistakes for me to trust him only getting a short number on the road. Dolphins are 18-5 and five straight up and 14-9 and nine ATS at home under McDaniel. This is also a revenge spot for Miami after losing to Tennessee on Monday Night Football last year. I'd lay the short number with the Dolphins. Uh, play number four here on the Power 5 today. I also like the first half under in Titans-Dolphins. You can still get 18 and a half at DraftKings, pretty much 17 and a half everywhere else. Talked about this on the morning wager with Mark Zinno, but unless if there's something like a pick six, I don't see how these two offenses combine for many points tonight. I don't see how there's a lot of scoring, especially early on. In terms of points per possession, these are actually the bottom two offenses in the entire league this far. And remember, for Miami, that includes when Tua was in there. Without Tua, this Dolphins offense's average is 4.8 yards per play. Huntley, new to the system. It's going to be a struggle early on now. I still like the Dolphins to win this game, and that's because Tennessee has yet to score more than 17 in any game this season. So it's first half under 17 and a half on Titans Dolphins. Again, you can get 18 and a half at DraftKings as of this recording. Lastly, play number five. Let me give you a player prop for Seahawks Lions. Seahawks wide receiver Tyler Lockett over 43 and a half receiving yards. In his last two games versus Detroit, Lockett has gone for a combined 150 yards receiving, clearing this number of 43 and a half both times. He had 91 and 59 in the two games. This Lions defense has had a ton of problems so far in the past game, especially with elite receivers. And Seattle's got two elite receivers, Lockett and Metcalf. I think there's going to be plenty of opportunities here for Lockett to shine. So over 43 and a half receiving yards. All right, let's recap the Power Five because there is certainly a lot going on here on Monday, despite not being many games, but I gave you a lot of different angles here. Okay, number one, Mets Braves over seven and a half in game one of today's Major League Baseball doubleheader. Number two, over in the English Premier League, I will lay the price with Bournemouth against Southampton, around minus 175 on the money line. Number three, Miami, minus two and a half against Tennessee. Number four, Miami, Tennessee, first half under, 17 and a half. Number five, Seattle wide receiver Tyler Lockett, over 43 and a half receiving yards. Smash that like button if you agree with what you heard just now. And again, Go ahead and let me know your favorite bets for Monday, whether it's the doubleheader in Major League Baseball or the doubleheader in the NFL. You, of course, can let me know by commenting down below here on YouTube. One more time, I am the number one NFL capper this season over at Wager Talk, hitting an incredible 73% overall, including 8-1 and one with sides. I am playing the side tonight in Seahawks-Lions as we go for 9-1. and one. Of course, also make sure you're subscribed to the Wager Talk YouTube channel as I've not only got you covered daily with the Power 5, but every Monday through Friday, It is myself and Mark Zinno doing the morning wager. More free plays there. And that is going to do it for the Monday edition of the Power 5. Until next time, guys, let's catch some tickets.